Hello, I thought I'd give you an update on my Catlia Nobilior, uh, Far Amalie. Um, I got this one from Seattle Orchids a year ago, and if you recall, I said, hey, there's mushrooms growing in my pot, it's no good. Well, she bloomed and her bulbs are plumping up quite nicely now. I think that the mushroom was just like an intermediary thing in, in the plants uh, getting used to the pot. And if you look down here, I got some roots. And to answer a question I had from a viewer, this is about the level of water I put in the pot. And these holes on the side of the reservoir, these will help it dry out uh, pretty well. Um, so it's like, you know, let me hold it up. I just watered. It's like just a little, little eensy weensy bit of water. And if you look at my roots, like my roots aren't fully submerged in it. It's just enough to keep them hydrated for like a day or two. Ideally you want it to dry out um, fairly quick. I'd say like three or four days is the maximum drying time. And if you look in there after three or four days, it's still wet. You just dump out the water from uh, these holes in the pot right there. So a little bit more about Cattleya nobilior var amalie. Uh, mine is a seedling, it's not a clone, and it shows it's quite lopsided and funky looking. The scent is really nice. Unfortunately, I, I don't get to enjoy it that much because it's in another room and it's buried behind some other plants. Uh, but when I did smell it, it smells nice. It reminds me of Big Red Bubblegum, but I don't think that's entirely accurate and I'm sure that people disagree with me. It definitely has like a like a kind of a reminds me of some kind of candy. I don't know what it is. Candy and flowers. But uh, it's a nice smell and it's pretty strong too. It's one of the stronger uh, orchid smells I've smelled. Um, other than that I don't have a lot to say about her so I suppose if I have more plants blooming and I feel like filming I'll move on to the next one. Next up is Cattleya landate. This is a primary hybrid between Cattleya clandiae and Cattleya guttata, I believe. And it looks just like you would imagine it to look. Um, very spotted, um, very, very fragrant too. It smells just like the Cattleya clandiae, which isn't surprising because that's one of the parents. Um, smells really strong. I can actually smell it from here. I'm about a foot away. Uh, very sweet. Um, I don't really know how to describe it. It's hard to describe, but if you smell it, you know, you'll you'll immediately find it familiar and very beautiful. It's uh, one of the best Catlius fragrances I think I've ever smelled. I love the Eclandia. I love the Eclandia's fragrance more than the Wakariana, actually, because the Wakariana, there's uh, something about it. It's nice, but there's something about it that just isn't as good as this one. This one's a lot, uh, a lot nicer, in my opinion. Um, she is potted up in hydroponics. Um, I spray the roots so the roots get rather long, and this one I actually broke. Um, something weird about this one, I bought it from Akatsuka in bud, but this whole growth seems to have, these two growths right here, they've shriveled up and they've died, and I don't know why. And actually this blooming that happened, happened on a separate growth from a completely different direction. So I don't know what happened there, but I'm glad to see it blooming, and I think it's recovered quite nicely. I'm going to show you the roots. Uh, this one does need to be watered because uh, it's quite dry, but I have roots invading the reservoir now, so that's awesome. So this one's well on its way to recovery. And speaking of that, maybe I'll just go ahead and give this one a water so I can show you the process behind it in this uh, method of watering. So why don't I go do that now? Okay, so I'm gonna show you how I water with my wick watering method. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna evaluate, do I have roots above or below the reservoir? If you only have roots above the reservoir, then you only need to check and see if your wicks are wet up here and if your roots are green up here on the top. If, however, you have roots in the bottom of the reservoir, which I do here, then you want to make sure that the wick that is right here, actually I can't show you because I only have two hands, uh, you want to make sure that wick that goes into the reservoir is also dry, because um, if it's not you're going to rot your roots. And um, after you establish that, what you're going to do is you're going to kind of mist your roots, and I mist until they turn green essentially. And you want to mist your aerial roots as well. I'm going to get my carpet a little wet, but it won't be too bad. 
And once you miss your roots above above uh, the reservoir, actually, let me turn this around. Get these ones as well. All right, so once you miss your roots, and your roots have turned green, as you can see here, uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pour a very small amount of water into the reservoir. So I'm just gonna kind of pour over this way. And if you wanna save time, you don't really have to miss your roots. I just, I like to miss my roots because um, if you missed, then things tend to um, grow a lot better than if you just put a little water on it. All right, and this is all the water you need. Like I'm kind of trying to show you it's not really very much water at all. And actually, I don't see... Oh, here we go. Can you can you see that? It's like barely... It's barely a, a half an inch of water in there. And that's all you need. Um, that will dry out in three or four days. It's okay if your roots sit in a little bit of water as long as they're not completely submerged for like an entire week. Like a couple days isn't going to hurt anything. This lovely lady is Odontonia Irene big mama and she is a big mama i'm gonna just kind of zoom out and show you the whole plant yeah it's big it's got like a a two or three foot two uh it has three two foot spikes on it with multiple flowers and uh the growths themselves are pretty large too um she is very very fragrant um she smells like old lady perfume maybe a little bit like licorice as well um, love the fragrance on this. Um, I don't quite, I think it's from the Os Oncidium hostilabium, and I think the other, uh, cr uh, the other member of this cross is Oncidium fuscatum, I believe. Uh, both of which I believe are fragrance. I don't know which parent is responsible for the fragrance, but man, just, just gorgeous. And she's bloomed a few times for me, um, in, per year in the past. So she's a pretty good performer. The one thing I don't like about my Oncidium Irene Big Mama is, let me show you, you see this, this one right here? The lip didn't open right, and I'm thinking it's because I'm letting it dry out too much in between waterings, because that's like a, that defect happens quite a, a few times, so it's kind of weird. I'm thinking it's something I'm doing, I don't think it's the plant's fault, but, um, and it's actually kind of hard to film because it's the I can't get the lighting right, so the light keeps going through the flowers. It's actually very, very pretty. It doesn't look as kind of flimsy as it's looking in the camera right now. But then again, it might be my camera. Um, so I am in a bit of a hurry because I actually have an appointment uh, to get COVID tested because I have a knee surgery scheduled this week So I'm actually gonna go dark again <laughs> um, In the not too distant future because my knee is gonna be really messed up I don't know how I'm gonna film or bring plants anywhere. So I'm gonna be lazy I'm just gonna show you some plants that are at the uh, The grow area in the kitchen when they're under lights uh, The first one is on sedium cherry baby. I'm just gonna zoom out so you can see how massive this spike is Look at that. It's at least three or four feet of, of chocolatey goodness. And she's very fragrant right now. Um, the lighting is definitely distorting my picture a little bit, but she is very, she's a very beautiful, beautiful plant. Um, and she has a second spike going. Um, that spike is right here. It's also three or four feet. So this one's gonna be in bloom quite a few times, uh, for quite a while as well. Um, some other things I have going on, the BLC Memoria Anabalmors is in bloom, very, very fragrant, and I do believe she's working on some buds from some other new growths as well. This one's been in bloom a ridiculous amount this year, and uh, she's just really taken off. I'm very proud of her, and uh, I have to say, I think it's she blooms frequently from the Walkeriana parent that's in her. Because a lot of my other big fluffy catalias, they are not as good of performers as this one. So I'm thinking it's the hair, it's the family tree that's what's making this one so good. Um, RLC Shinshang Diamond has some buds going on. I don't know if you can see this, uh, this sheath right here. It has a darkness in it. Um, I believe my other sheaths are budding up as well. So that one's going to be in bloom soon. The Catlia 
Mari Song or the RLC Mari Song has buds on multiple growths. She'll be in bloom soon. Um, LSU Tropical Pointer Cheetah, if I can show you the blooms. She is also in bloom. I'm in a hurry, so this is actually the, some of the poorest quality footage I've done in a while. Um, not a good bloom off of this one either, so. My wife's probably gonna kill me because I'm filming the kitchen and there's groceries in the background, but just wanted to show you my two zygopedalums I have in bloom right now at the same time. Uh, this first one is Mathena Meadows. Um, smells very musky and peppery. It's not really the most pleasant zygopetalum fragrance in the world, but I feel strangely compelled to keep smelling it. Um, but yeah, very peppery and she is in hydroponics. Um, so you can see her bulbs are pretty fat. And let me go ahead and show you the roots because I like showing roots. Yep, she has some root growth in there. I just watered her. And then this is a no ID Zygo. I think it's either Rhine Clown or Rhine Moonlight. And it has a very pleasant fragrance, similar to Hyacinth, but not quite. And this one is also in hydroponics. Um, not doing the best out of probably all my Zygos, except for the Advanced Australia, but she did mature a very healthy growth, so. All right, I think this video is super, super long now. So I'm gonna let you go, have a wonderful rest of your day and uh, I'll see you when my knee recovers.